I'd like to take a moment to thank my channel members for your continued support. Thank you. And consider joining today for added perks and exclusive content. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformer Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Soundwave and I love this toy. And I have to give a big thank you to my good friend and fellow con bro, Patriot Prime, who sent me this figure as a Christmas present. Jason, thank you so very much for sending me this figure. This is an absolutely cool, this is a very interesting figure. It's a very cool figure, and I've been really having a lot of fun with this. Obviously, I did not wait uh, to shoot this before I opened it. I just I just opened it right up. I, I, I Hey, it's a Christmas present. I had to open it up. Um, and yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this figure. It's it's not going to be for everybody. Uh, it's very interesting. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, Jason, thank you so much again for sending this to me. This is fantastic. Thanks so much. So yeah, uh, here we have uh, Soundwave uh, out of his box. And I'm doing something a little different this time. I am going to start with him in robot mode, which is not usually what I do. But you'll see why in a moment. Uh, released in December of 2021. This is brand new and starting to hit store shelves right now as of the time of this recording. It is a Voyager class figure and retails for approximately $30. And I'm going to back up here. As you can see, Soundwave, here we have Soundwave out of the package. In his background, as with all the Studio Series figures, they do come with a pretty cool little display background if you want to use it. That's what I have him on right now. He does come with a couple of accessories. We'll be looking more in detail here in a moment. We've got this, uh, uh, his shoulder cannon right there. We also have this laser rifle, uh, which I'm not particularly fond of. It's just kind of weird. It doesn't look anything like his G1 uh, or, or, or G1 style um, kind of a, a cannon so, or, or a weapon. So it's just, this is kind of a weird choice for him. And he, of course, comes with his sheet of instructions. Quite frankly, you're probably not going to need him for him. I'm going to back up some. We'll take a look at the packaging. So here we have his box, Bumblebee movie appear logo up at the top. Transformers logo, Studio Series, eight, no, this is number 83, Soundwave. You've got some really cool artwork of Soundwave right there. Same one over here on the side. And then same thing over here on this side, just a little close up. And then on the back, big screen, Inspire Scale, Detail, Backdrop. Uh, and then you got uh, some product shots of Soundwave, both in his robot and in his uh, vehicle, question mark mode, uh, 29 steps for transformation. Something that was interesting about this, usually you get the backdrop and then the figure will be tied into some sort of a clear plastic tray to hold them in place. Not the case with this one. They've switched over to cardboard. This is the tray that he was actually attached to right here. So, and you can see that this is actually a match for that right there. So that was, that's interesting. They they switched it over from the clear plastic tray to this cardboard here. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the packaging. We'll move that off to the side. In fact, we'll go ahead and get rid of the backdrop, and uh, we'll get we'll get focused here on the figure itself. Again, we don't need the instructions at this point. That's pretty much all that came with it. The figure stands approximately seven inches tall, and as you can see, it is a very, very nice representation of Soundwave as we saw him. In the Bumblebee movie, this figure looks fantastic. This is such a beautiful update to the old classic character. Taking a closer look right there at the face, so you can see all the details right there on the face. The blue head with the silver mouth plate and the red eyes looking really, really cool. And then, of course, the entire body is done in blue with some white highlights, a little bit of gray here and there. And then you've got that gold pinstriping right there for what would, would be the cassette door later on. Now, as of this time, we don't have any cassettes or, or, or any of his companions that are going to fit in there. And this is something that's very odd to me. This is an incomplete figure. Uh, Ravage, as shown, in fact, where are those instructions? Let me get that out again. Ravage will be available and he will be sold separately. Um, he's in here somewhere. There he is. So they show Ravage right there. Right, so, and I think that, yeah, there he is. So you can see there's Ravage. He's going to transform into some sort of a little cube. And he also comes with a little weapon, right? So they show that Ravage will transform into the little cube. He will fit inside of Soundwave's chest. But also, Ravage comes with the little tip piece 
for the shoulder cannon to actually complete them and make it look like more like the G1 inspired weapon. So this really kind of feels like an incomplete figure uh, by them not including Ravage and not including the tip to his weapon and even just giving us this instead of the more classic style cannon weapon that he usually tends to carry. It feels like they sold us an incomplete figure. You gotta buy Ravage separately to complete this one. It's we it's a weird, weird feeling. Um, going all the way around, it is a solid figure. Uh, there's not really any kibble hanging out. There aren't really any um, hollow spots really anywhere. It's just, it's a very, very solid figure. And that's a good thing because in my opinion, again, this is the really the only mode that works. The, the, that vehicle question mark vehicle mode, uh, it's just weird and it does not work for me at all. But again, we didn't see him transform in the movie. They had to come up with something. If you use your imagination, maybe it can be a hover tank of some sort, who knows what, but uh, really this is the mode you're looking at and uh, it's a fantastic Fantastic mode. Articulation wise, the head is on a ball joint. You can look up and down, side to side. The shoulders can move forward and backwards all the way around. You can also move forward and backwards internally in there. That's more for transformation than anything else. You can also move them outwards. Rotation at the bicep, bend at the elbow. And do we get a rotation at the wrist? No, we do not. That's due to transformation. We have a rotation at the waist, but as you saw, you got to move this little hip skirt up at, out of the way. Legs can go forward, backwards, in and out, rotate at the thigh. You got a double hinge at the knee. You got a hinge here and a hinge down here, uh, which just barely gets you over 90 degrees. The feet can move back and forth a little bit, and you got ankle tilt for days. So, uh, yep, pretty much it for posability. Now, weapons-wise, we do get this, and this is interesting, the way that this connects here. Typically, as, as you know, usually these shoulder cannons, they look just like this. And they would plug it right into his shoulder like that. Not the case here. This is, stay up. This is what we're going to use to, <laughs> what is going on here? That's what we're going to use to combine or to attach the weapon to the vehicle mode. For robot mode, you're going to flip this out and we're going to use this little peg around his back. And as you can see, he's got one hole on each side. So you can go on either side and just pe peg that right in there. And then just put that over his shoulder, which is cool because as you saw in the box art, that actually allows for some dynamic poses to do stuff like that, which is actually going to give him a weapon. So he looks like he's armed up. Come on. So, but yeah, it, it actually, it's, it's an interesting, different thing that we're doing here with Soundwave, attaching that thing to his back, but it actually allows for posability on the shoulder cannon also to do some cool poses with him. So I, I dig it. I actually like that a lot. Check that out. That looks really, really cool. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. All right, let's get them straightened out. Let's do a couple of quick comparisons. Here is Studio Series 80, Studio, Bumblebee Movie, Studio Series number 83, Soundwave, next to Earth. Was this Earthrise or Kingdom? I don't know. The Earth version of Soundwave. So you can see what these guys look like together. And again, very cool update to the G1 figure. Very cool modern take on this character for the uh, live action movies. Really, really dig this design. So there you go. So you can see what these two look like together. And you can see it's kind of weird. Again, uh, Soundwave has always been known to have this kind of a cannon weapon with this gold tip here or with this chrome tip. He's not going to have this weapon, but he is going to have the tip, which is going to connect to the shoulder. Uh, it, it's just, it's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, there he is with Earth, Earthrise, Kingdom, whatever, War for Cybertron figure he is. And then here he is one more time with G1 Soundwave, so you can see what the two of these look like together. So, there you go. Very cool. Now, getting into transformation for this guy. Um, we'll go ahead and take his weapons, remove them, set them off to the side for now. All right. Things are about to get weird. Do I? I don't even remember. Do I turn the head? I don't even remember if I turned the head or not. Uh, I don't think that you do. All right, so we're going to start off here with the shoulders, and we're going to take these little panels on the shoulders and just open them up, and then bring, using the the shoulder uh, hinge, this hinge right here, we're going to turn these all the way around like so. Actually, let's start here at the arms. Go ahead and open the arm. Put the fist away. Do the same thing over here. Open up the arm. Put the fist away. 
All right. So now these little panels uh, tend to pop off on me. So just so you know, bring the arm back down again. And then we're going to bring this entire thing up. And there is a little slot right there. It's going to go into this tab back here. It's not super secure. It just kind of shows you where it's going to go. And that's really kind of it. And then we're going to turn the arm downwards that way. So again, bring this, bring these two flaps open, bring the entire thing forward, bring the arm back down again, and then bring this piece up. And I think it popped off on me. Yep. See, I told you these, these pieces tend to pop off on me. And again, these tabs are not super secure. They're really more for just kind of showing you where it is that they're going to go right, more than anything else. Um, I am almost convinced I should have turned his head around, but it doesn't look like it fit. Let me try that with the head turned. Yeah, there's, is it going to fit? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay, you can turn the head. That works too. I think actually you're supposed to do that. So there you go. Anyway, we, uh, so we have the arms like this. We turned them down and we're going to take this slot and we're going to peg it into this tab right here. It's not straightforward. You're going to uh, manipulate the hinges and the joints to get it to line up right. So there you go. There is that. All right. Now moving on to the legs, we're going to go to the back of the legs. We're going to open these up, open those panels. And then there's another panel in here. You're going to pull that out as well. So again, open that panel and then open that panel. We're going to turn these this, which way? This way, back here. We're going to turn them so that the panels are facing up like this. And this gets weird. Again, uh, take the feet and just flip them up so they're kind of out of the way. Now, we're going to take these two joints here at the knees and we're going to flip the legs all the way around. I'm going to bring that down, but we're not going to bring it up all the way just yet because we have to take this and tab it into this. So this is kind of like one of those transformations where you have multiple steps that you have to do all at the same time kind of a deal, right? So, and it's, it, it takes some doing and some massaging to get everything lined up correctly the way it needs to go. So these two little panels here in the middle, we're going to, uh, we're going to tab these in while holding those. We want to bring the legs up as far as they're going to go. Uh, now the feet, go ahead and rotate these. Yeah, we're going to rotate these all the way around. And then we're going to flip the feet back down and we want to get these these slots onto these tabs again while keeping all of the leg pieces here straight and together and also not untabbing the arm <laughs> from where it is. Again, it's one of those, you just kind of have to massage everything, hold the entire thing with your arm, with your fists while you're trying the tab in one thing, holding the rest of the figure in place. See what I did there just now? I untapped that one when I tapped this. That actually didn't go as bad as it usually does. I guess I'm kind of getting used to it. But basically the idea here is you tab the two leg halves together. You push the entire front of the vehicle back while keeping all of these tabs in place. And yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. Take these... Uh, little claw pieces here. Move these forward. We're going to work up here now. Take this panel, bring it up and rotate it. Bring this entire thing up, rotate the whole thing, and then bring it back down again. That's kind of like a fake chest piece right there, but it also kind of creates a cockpit. And there you go. That is Soundwave's vehicle mode. And like I said, it's it's just, it's weird. This is just, it, it's, it's weird. Um, this vehicle mode is approximately five inches long. It's about four inches wide and it's about one and a half inches tall. And I don't know what to say about this other than what you're seeing. I mean, you're seeing it right there. Uh, well, it's literally, what is this, right? <laughs> um, J Patriot Prime said this is a Cybertronian hamburger. That was, you know, really funny. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's just the thing. It's, it's some sort of a square thing, pancake-ish thing. There's, there, I mean... There isn't, there aren't any wheels. You can't do anything with this. It's, it's a mode because they needed to make a mode and it's a spaceship because, or it's a hover vehicle because we say it is. In fact, what does the box say that this is? I don't even know what the box says that this is. Box says nothing. It doesn't say. Do the instructions say what this is? Usually they say convert to something. They don't. They don't even tell you what this is. So, 
<laughs> there you go. What is this? We don't know. Leave a comment below and uh, tell me what this is. What do you think this is? What do you want this to be? <laughs> so you can attach the weapons. You can attach. They show you to put this one over here on this side. And then this one over here on this side. And there's your vehicle armed up. You're ready for battle, I guess. Now, it would have been cool. Like, it, or it would have been a little more cohesive, I guess. If there would have been a way to put this up here or maybe to the side, something that would evoke it being some sort of a hover tank, right? If, if they, there was a peg hole over here, maybe, or over here, or even in the center, something to make this some sort of a tank, I guess, would have been cool, but you can't even do that. You, you, they're, they're on the sides here. It kind of sounds like I don't like this figure. I know how I'm coming off. Um, don't get me wrong. I do like this figure. I just don't like this vehicle mode. This vehicle mode is BS. It really is. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what that is. So, and th th this is why I went in this uh, in, in in this order rather than going from vehicle first because it's just so weird. Now, I am going to do the following. I'm going to do a fan mode because you can. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering: Can you do the light post mode at least? If it's Cybertronian, can we at least do the light post mode? Well, I think you can. I came up with something. Uh, here fiddling with it and we're gonna see if I remember how to do it. So I'm gonna start bringing him back to robot mode and I believe I just left these facing back or you can do these facing out. It's completely up to you. But yeah, anyway, we're gonna go here. I am gonna leave the chest piece open. You can use either side, right? So I'm gonna leave the fake chest on his back and I'm gonna unpeg his arms and bring them out. And uh, you can do some sort of, you know, whatever looks best to you. I like using this side because I like how this closes up here. You can go with this side if you'd like, but that kind of leaves a whole bunch of open stuff there. So I kind of prefer using this side. You could also rotate them if you want to do that. So anyway, yeah, like I said, I prefer, I uh, uh, let's see, let's turn these some that way. There you go. And I prefer using his robot legs. It'd be nice if you could turn them outwards and this wasn't uh, hollow. What about if I turn these? Can we turn it this way? That's not going to make much sense, is it? Will that work? Nah, that won't work. Let's go with it this way. I like this. And then you just kind of tilt it a little bit. And there you go. You got yourself a... Uh, a light post, no, Cybertronian light post. Honestly, I think <laughs> this works better than the vehicle mode. If you ask me, I like this better. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let me let me. I, I'm not liking the the waist turned around. I'm gonna take it back the way I had it. I think it worked better this way. This way with the feet turned backwards. At least for me. I mean, this is a fan mode. You know, I I. <laughs> I don't know that this isn't any less official than the actual vehicle mode they gave us. So there you go. This is this is my Cybertronian lamp post mode. And I think this works better than the vehicle mode that they gave us. So let's take them back to robot mode. Um, yeah, so take this, flip it, flip it. Flip and flip, 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 flip. I, I'm starting to sound like, um, like the Swedish chef. Flip, 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 flip. Uh, bring these down, turn that around, open the hand, hit the hand out. So we'll finish off in robot mode like I usually do. And uh, yeah, this is, it's its a weird figure. Now that's not to say I dislike this figure. I, 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 and I, look, I'm aware of how I sounded with the vehicle mode, but come on, let's be fair. That vehicle mode sucks. <laughs> that vehicle mode is garbage. Um, I think honestly, it's, it, th that vehicle mode is no more a fan mode than the lamp, <laughs> lamp post mode that I did just now, uh, if in my opinion anyway. Uh, so if I ever do transform this figure, that's what I'm transforming him into. He transforms into a lamp post because honestly, that lamp post is better than that vehicle mode. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I would be, I would like to see this figure done again with an actual proper vehicle mode. I don't know, something with threads, something with a, a, a an actual turret or, or something of the sort, uh, something of a co more cohesive vehicle mode. But again, here we go back to the robot mode. 
And this is a glorious robot mode. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Love the way this looks. Again, so, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not going to be for everybody, right? This has an amazing robot mode. But honestly, the the, the the alt mode on this thing is is just not, it's it's not good. Um, you can play with it. You can make your own. If you want to make a lamp post mode, and then, hey, there you go. Um, if you're okay with it for just the robot mode, then, hey, that's great. But if you're into it because of the vehicle mode, that vehicle mode is terrible. There's no real vehicle mode with this thing. It's not, it's just, it's, yeah. Anyway, I think I think I've said enough about that. I love it. I absolutely love this figure. I think this is beautiful. I, I think the, the lamp post mode is clever and fun. Funny. Um, that vehicle mode is terrible, but I love this. I love the way this looks, and, and, and I display my figures in robot mode anyway, and this is going to look fantastic on the shelf. And I think that about does it for the Transformers Bumblebee Movie Studio Series Soundwave. What did you think of this figure? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. One more time, I want to give a huge thank you to my friend Patriot Prime for sending me this awesome, awesome Christmas present. As always, guys, I've got a donate button up there. I've also got channel memberships now. If you feel so inclined to do either one of those, I would greatly appreciate it. Please share with your friends if you like what you see, and I'll talk to you next time.